So, you were Jack. When he had her words, Jack let out a smile as he replied, That's me, Aunt. You look no different as the time that I saw you on the video. Anita continued with a smile on her face. And although she was trying to hide it well, Jack could already perceive that she was feeling sad. This was something that didn't surprise him because he knew that his appearance reminded her of her sister. Having been separated for over two decades, it was just normal for her to feel sad after knowing the fact that her sister had passed away already. As for Anita, she completely ignored the gaze that she was receiving from her husband. As for the girl who had come over to cause trouble, she had never taken him seriously at all. According to her, the guy was just going to blubber around her before he finally leaves empty-handed. She had never thought that the person was really going to take whatever she had in possession at all. Perhaps this could have taken place if Jonathan was not around. But now that Jonathan was back, she wasn't afraid that there's anyone who could beat him. This was the confidence that she had in her son. Come and take a seat. Anita smiled as she stood up from her seat and welcomed Jack. Jonathan, on the other hand, had a shift in his expression. He couldn't talk but think that this was just too much. Weren't people just favoring Jack too much? Not to mention Celine. Even his mother was now favoring Jack? All the same, he decided to put that aside as he decided to focus on the person that had come over to cross trouble. This was something that he had to deal with as soon as possible so that he could get rid of the foul air that was in the house. Since you are not welcome here, why don't you leave? Jonathan asked coldly as he looked at the long-nosed guy. What do you mean that I should leave? Not to mention that I am your senior, and I am here to pay a visit. I have just asked you a question, but you have not answered. The guy sneered. But all the same, he was no longer arrogant as he was before Jack and Jonathan came in. This was such a drastic change because he knew the position that he was in was not favorable as long as Jonathan was present. With Jonathan's abilities, it was a sure bet that the family elders would not there to try causing trouble for him considering that he was someone who had a good chance of taking over the position of the family head. Someone like Jonathan was very valuable to the family considering that the elders were nearing their end. They had been in the position of the family elders for a good while now. They were supposed to have abdicated their position during the past generation. But due to in, they were left with no choice but to continue holding the position so that the family rules could be followed to the latter. I don't think I have any obligation to answer to any of your questions. And since I have stated that you are not invited here at the moment as we are going to deal with something private, I would like to ask you to leave. This time, as Jonathan spoke, he had a threatening daze fixated at the guy. The guy, although he thought that Jonathan would not actually there to make a move on him, he had no choice but to get on his feet. To say the least, he was intimidated by Jonathan. Jonathan was well known in the family as the person who usually used his fists if there was a need for him to. Knowing very well that Jonathan was well versed in combat abilities, he had no intention of trying them out himself. Although it was true that the family rules would protect him, that was only if there was evidence that proved that he was the one who was at the receiving end and not the other way round. The fact that he was currently present in Jonathan's house was enough to make him at a disadvantage during the judgment. What was he doing there if he was not invited? There was yet another fact that, he was only a single person while inside this room, there were four people who were not on the same side as him. With a snort, he left after glaring daggers at Anita and Gregory. As for those who were the receiving end of the glaring, they completely ignored him. After the guy left, Gregory could not hold it anymore and asked Anita, Do you mind introducing me to this guest of ours? Oh, I never thought that you're interested. Anita, who was just chatting with Jack, shifted her gaze towards him as she spoke sarcastically. What do you mean that I'm not interested? What part of me shows that I'm not interested? Gregory asked as he looked at Anita with a stern gaze. All right, I'll do the introduction. Anita rolled her eyes at him before she looked at Jack. Jack, this is your uncle and my husband Gregory. Gregory, this one here is Jack. He is my sister's son. Jack got to his feet and extended his hand for a greeting. Gregory received the hand and shook it. At the same time, he looked at Anita and asked, By your sister, do you mean in? He knew about and during the time that he was dating Anita and had yet to leave the family. He had met her several times and they had made an acquaintance. How many sisters do you think I have? Anita questioned. Although he had a hunch about this, Gregory was completely surprised. He looked at Jack and he could see the semblance that he heard with both and and Anita. And where is in? Gregory asked. Well, she passed away about four years ago. Jack replied. He said all of these plainly without showing much of emotion. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Gregory stated after noticing that he had touched on something that wasn't supposed to be talked about. No problem at all. It has been a while and I've already gotten used to it. 
Jack replied. After that, Jack engaged himself into a long talk with what Anita and Gregory. They talked about a lot of things as they tried knowing each other. Jack came to know more about them just as they came to know about him through the questions that he gave answers to. But of course, there were several things that he didn't reveal to them. It was not like you had to say anything or had to reveal any secrets that he had to them simply because they were related. There are things that even Celine didn't know about despite the fact that she was his wife-to-be. Jonathan, on the other hand, couldn't help but sulk on the coach as he looked at the three people who were engaged in a conversation. They were talking and laughing at each other while completely ignoring about his presence as if he never existed at all. His lips couldn't help but twitch at that. In the end, he could only check his head before he got up and headed for his room that was located on the second floor of the mansion. After about 30 minutes of chatting, Gregory finally bid his goodbyes as he left for work. He had a lot of things to do considering that there were several things or businesses that were under his management as a son-in-law of the Jesta family. This was something that all the son-in-laws that were married into the Jesta family had. They were given several businesses that were under the family for them to manage. But of course, this was something that was not done blindly. Only those who had capabilities were the ones that were given the opportunities to keep more. If one of the son-in-laws was just a wastrel, then he might end up with nothing at all. This was just how the family worked. On the other hand, after Gregory left, Jack continued spending time with Anita. He chatted with her and discussed a lot of things concerning his mother. It seemed that that after Gregory left was when Anita had gotten a freedom to ask about her sister. She could finally show her saddened emotions. In the end, Jack spent the whole day there. It seemed that Anita had enjoyed his company because he reminded her of her sister. When it was evening, Anita had wanted Jack to stay over but Jack refused. He still had other things to do. Additionally, there was a round trip that he had to do with Celine for her training schedule. Left with no choice, Anita could only agree. You should remember to pay me a visit more often. She stated as she looked at Jack who was standing at the door ready to leave. Don't worry, Aunt. I'll make sure to pay you more visits as long as I am free. Jack replied with a smile on his face. Okay then, have a safe trip. Anita stated. After that, Jack who was accompanied by Jonathan who was grumpy left the mansion. They got into the car and Jonathan drove away. Somewhere else in the Jesta Manor. Two men were facing each other. One of them was the long-nosed guy, and the other was a man who looked to be in his late forties. So, you were trying to tell me that there is another person other than Jonathan? Nathan asked as he looked at the long-nosed guy. At this moment, his expression wasn't good at all. He was currently under house arrest. This denial of freedom was something that he never liked at all. Now only people could come to see him, and not the other way around. Nathan had been in his villa all this while ever since the day that he was forbidden from leaving it. Although he had yet to leave the room, that didn't mean that he wouldn't leave if there was a chance that he could. As usual, a big family was always full of schemes. And this was already one of them. The long-nosed guy was here because this was actually part of his scheme that he was currently planning. Since he saw that he could not make a move on Anita and Jonathan with the family's current situation, he decided that he was going to find someone that would do the work for him. What he currently wanted was to make sure that one of the companies that was currently under Anita's family management underperformed so that the family elders would shift the management to another person. And of course, he was the person who was going to be chosen. He had already made enough plans for that. What he wanted Nathan to do was simply to do something that would make sure that the company would underperform. As for the method that Nathan was going to use, that was actually none of his concern. He knew nothing all too well for the fact that he was a person who was always scheming and could do anything. Although he was currently on the house arrest, that didn't mean that he had lost connections that he had outside. What the long-nosed guy wanted was simply to use the connections that Nathan had to fulfill what he wanted. If the family went on to investigate about what had occurred, all the blame would fall on Nathan. As for him, he was the one who was going to benefit without even lifting a finger. Nathan could of course tell that there was a reason behind why this guy had come over to see him. He wasn't gullible enough to believe that there was anyone in the family other than the wife and children that he had that really cared about him. But right at this moment, he really didn't care about what this guy was here to do or what his purpose really was. In his current situation, he had really lost a lot. Not to mention the assets and the power that he had accumulated in the family over the decades that had gone by. He had lost even the chance that he had to the position of the family head. Although the position was just indirect, he still thought that it was valuable enough for him to hold the power considering that his son Arthur wasn't someone who could make decisions. Being the mastermind who was doing things from the darkness, that was just how he had initially planned to do things. 
But all of this had been foiled by Jonathan, or so he believed. And as such, the current hatred that he had towards Jonathan was something that was incomparable to any that he had felt ever before. Although he also hated his father and his uncle who were part of the current leadership of the family, as well as the rules that had completely prevented his rise to power. They were completely incomparable to the person who had used the family rules to make sure that he completely lost what he wanted. Yes, there's this another guy who looks exactly like Jonathan but he is called Jack. And currently I am assuming that he is a twin to Jonathan. Perhaps I need to heard he didn't all of these from the public eye that she had twins. The long-nosed guy said. Nathan's expression darkened further. He now remembered what his son had told him back then. Arthur had told him back then that they were actually two people who were Jonathan. With his eyes completely turning cold, the anger that was in his heart ignited further. His eyes turned blood red as he thought of something. It seems that I was wrong. It was not Jonathan who made a move on me. It seems that it is this Jack who was hidden in the dark that was making moves. Nathan muttered to himself. He could already imagine that this was all part of a scheme that was planned by Jonathan and his family. They had planned to keep Jonathan in the dark so that in the future, they would utilize him to render his only competition out of the equation. Just the thought of this made his anger seethe. Even the long-nosed guy who was seated in front of him couldn't help but shiver a little when he saw the ferocious expression that was on Nathan's face. He gulped loudly as he looked at him. Although he was currently acting nonchalantly about the way things were, he had no choice but to be scared. But knowing that what was at stake was extremely valuable to him, he had no choice but to hide the expression that was threatening to appear on his face. Good, good, just good. Nathan said good three times as he nodded his head repeatedly. Since you are trying to play a game with me, then I have got no choice but to play it with you further. Then, we are going to see who is going to emerge victorious at the end of the day. Nathan stated loudly. He then shifted his gaze towards the guy who was planning schemes on him. He knew that whatever he was going to do next, as long as the family elders got a hint of it, there was no doubt that his punishment was going to be increased drastically. But, none of that mattered to him at this moment considering that he was already down. It was going to be something akin to a miracle for him to go back to the position that he was previously in. And, since he was already down, then there was no harm if he was going to pull someone else to accompany him down there. Give me your phone. Nathan stated as he stretched his hand out. He didn't even try to show the etiquette when he was trying to borrow something from the guy. He knew that this game was going to benefit from something, and he had to do whatever it was that Nathan demanded. Otherwise, all the plans that he had planned all these times would surely be for nothing. With twitching lips, the guy took out his phone that he had already prepared in advance and gave it to Nathan. Nathan had already been denied all means of communication. And all those that came into his room to visit him were inspected to make sure that they didn't have any tool for communication. But he on the other hand had already disassembled a small phone that was recently made. Although it looked like a phone, the only function that it heard was to make calls and send text messages. It was something that had been created upon his request. And as such, it was not in the data system in that. The security checkup could not notice it. Nathan received the small cell phone that had been connected together by the guy before he dialed a number. Although the family had made sure to deny him all means of communication, that didn't mean that he was going to forget the numbers that he had already memorized. After dialing the number, he made a call. When the call was received, Nathan spoke, Gilmore, I would like you to do something for me. Nathan spoke a lot about his plans that were supposed to be carried out. He didn't even try hiding what he was saying to the other person from the guy in front of him. After a long 30 minutes of talk, he finally summarized whatever he had and ended the call. I will be remaining with this phone for the time being. I need to make more preparations. Nathan stated as he stared at the guy in front of him. The long-nosed guy thought about it for a moment before he nodded in agreement. He knew that some things and plans had to be made for a good period of time before they took effect. And since Nathan was going to make a plan that involved a member of the Jesta family, he had to make a very thorough plan that would surely work. Okay then, I will be coming for the phone tomorrow. The guy got to his feet before he left. Nathan who was remaining seated on his chair looked at the door with a cold gaze. In the end, he sneered. You think that you can actually use me as a tool? You better think about this twice. You are only starting to do things now, but I am a master in this. Let us just see how this is going to end for you for attempting to do something like that in my face. Nathan thought to himself. During night time, Nathan was sleeping when suddenly, the lights inside his bedroom suddenly lit up. This was something strange. It could have been normal if he was actually living with his wife and children. But ever since he was under house arrest, he had been living alone. Not to mention the fact that it was currently night time. 
He wondered who it was that had just come over to disrupt his night. Although he was currently under house arrest, that didn't mean that he was going to let just anyone to come and bother him. He opened his eyes as he snorted, Who the heck do you think you are to come over and disrupt my night inside my own bedroom? Nathan was forced to swallow the rest of the words that he was intending to say when he saw the silhouette of the person who was standing in front of his door. When the person who was standing there noticed his gaze, he spoke, Do you remember me? At this point, there was a chilling smile on his face. Jack looked at the shocked Nathan with a smile on his face. He had come over a moment after he had separated from Jonathan. Jonathan had stayed over and had supper there. They then went ahead to chat for a long while before Nathan finally decided to leave. As for how Jack had managed to sneak over here even though the security was tied in the Jesta family manner, that was something that related to the skills that he had on him. Not to mention the fact that he was stronger and faster than any normal human, there was also a fact that he actually knew the Jesta residents like the back of his hand. Although in the morning he was curious about the working of the security systems, that was only because he wanted to see the practicality of the things that he had seen. When he was sneaking into the family residence, he had used all the loopholes that were present and easily got over here without anyone noticing him. As for the cameras that could have recorded his arrival, that was something that Jack had left Denali to deal with. With her expertise, even the military had failed to do anything to the editing of the videos that she had done at the Glaze Hotel. He had come over today simply because he wasn't yet done with the vengeance that he had to exact. The revenge that he had decided that he was going to deal to Nathan was not any less than the one that Brenda and her mother Marion had faced back in Crystal City. Yes, he was the mastermind behind the death of his mother. Although he was not the one that had actually done the deed, that didn't make him any good because both Marion had decided to kill his mother only after she hadn't gone pressure from Nathan. Just the intention of killing her was enough for Jack to make sure that Nathan paid with his life. But the extent to which Nathan went and made sure that his mother died was enough to make sure that Nathan underwent a cruel death. Who are you? Nathan rose to his feet from the bed as he questioned. Although he had a clue about who Jack was, he just had to make sure that it was the person that he actually thought he was. As for the fear about just including into his house, that was something that he didn't care about at the moment. There was only one thing that he had to deal with at the moment, and that was to simply know the reason that's why he was here, and not how. Now, now, now. Are we pretending that we don't know each other again? Jack questioned as he looked at Nathan. The coldness in his eyes had never receded ever since he entered this room. The way that she was looking at Nathan was in such a way that sent chills down the spine of Nathan. Having been involved in several schemes in his life, Nathan had obviously encountered several people who had stared at him with ferocious expressions. But the one that was on Jack's face at the moment was one that he had never encountered before. You were Jack, and son? Nathan stated. Although it was like a question, there was a hint of self-confidence in his voice. You should not dare to mention her name. The next moment that you dare to mention that name, I'll make sure to tear off that mouth of yours from that skull of yours. Jack stated coldly. For a moment, Nathan was intimidated as he took a step behind only to manage to stay his ground after remembering that he was actually the senior here. He had to make sure that he wasn't going to show any type of weakness so that he could gain the advantage that there could be. Humph, so what's so special about her name? How I hate her. She's the main reason as to why I have never succeeded in my quest for power all along. Nathan retorted. There was clear anger in his eyes at the memories of what had happened over the past two decades. Due to the family rules, the moment that and left the family, that was the time that the family rules dictated that the people in the same generation as and could no longer take position of the family head. He had already begun making preparations earlier even before and decided to leave. Even the situation where and was going to be forced to marry another person was part of his schemes to gain more power. At that time, his influence wasn't as high as it was currently. Back then, he had to depend on several people from outside so that he could gain a standing in the family. That was the way he was, using others as tools so that he could gain whatever he wanted. Not to mention, and even those that were going to be engaged or marry and were going to be a part of his tools that were going to boost his rise to power. But all of this came crashing down the moment that and left. The people that were supposed to have his back at that moment disappeared the moment that they realized that and was no longer there. Why the heck would they help Nathan when whatever they wanted was no longer there? With that, they had decided to cut all the ties that they had with Nathan. When he got the news that they had decided to cut off the relationship that they were already forging, Nathan was obviously infuriated. But of course, most of the hatred was directed towards and. Although she was his younger sister, that was something that he thought that she could do as a younger sister to enable him to gain power. 
But what had completely infuriated him the most was the fact that the family rule had completely denied his generation of the chance of getting the seed of the family head. And of course, that was a rule that was always kept as a secret from them. And as such, even he only knew about it the moment that the family elders mentioned it. Had he known about this earlier, he would have made sure that and would not have escaped. Even if he had to change the target, it would have been better than losing the chance of being the family held completely. It seems that you're not even willing to let my mother go even after you had been the cause of her death. Jack stated as he said at Nathan. Nathan was slightly surprised at the fact that Jack actually knew that he was the reason behind Ann's death. But thinking about the fact that he thought that Jack was the one who had been leaking the information about the secrets that he had been keeping all along, he thought that it wasn't impossible for Jack to know about it. All the same, he still sneered at Jack. With a contemptuous gaze, he spoke, Had I known, I would have instructed them to kill you as well. Now I'm regretting not killing you back then. Had I known that you were going to cause me this amount of trouble in the future. Nathan lamented. Jack chuckled. He then said, Well, there's nothing for regrets anymore. It's now time for you to pay for the crimes that you have committed. And I'm going to make sure that you pay for every single pain that my mother underwent. Although he was chuckling, there was nothing but anger on his face. And even without saying another word, he launched himself towards Nathan. Bang. A ferocious sponge landed on Nathan's face. Jack had made sure to control the amount of strength that was behind that bunch of his. And as a result, he only blew Nathan backwards. But all the same, Nathan's nose had been broken. A copious amount of blood began flowing from the nose. Tears had already welled up inside Nathan's eyes due to the sudden pain that he had experienced. At this moment, he actually couldn't understand the situation that he was currently in. I hope that you enjoy the ride. Don't regret your actions yet. This is just the beginning. Jack spoke before he finally left. Nathan was still lying on the floor even after 10 minutes had gone by since Jack had left the room. He was still holding his nose trying to prevent the bleeding. His mind was racing at that moment. He was wondering on what he was going to do. He wasn't surprised by the fact that he was blown away by a single punch from Jack. This was actually not the first time that you had seen a person with superhuman strength. Even the time that he sent Spider to assassinate Jonathan, he had already done his investigation and knew that the guy was a person with superhuman abilities. The only surprise that he heard was the fact that even Jack had such amount of strength. Although he had not been keeping an eye on Jack for a long time, he had actually noticed that Jack was suppressed in the family that and was married into. This was actually the reason as to why he had decided to leave Jack alive. He had thought that the experience that Jack was going to gain from that family due to the suppression that he was facing was going to be enough pain for him to exert his vengeance even though, and had already passed away. It seems that I have to make contact with them. A person like Jack is not one that can be dealt with easily. Only them, they are the only ones who can actually deal with him. Nathan stated. In his eyes, currently, other than they hoped that he heard for his vengeance, there was also a hint of fear at the thought of the people that he was planning to contact. Without wasting much time, he took out the phone that the long-nosed guy had left for him, before he began dialing a number with shaking hands. Although his hands were shaking, there was the determination in his eyes as well as a hint of excitement as he made the call. After he paid a visit to Nathan, Jack's life went back to the way that it was previously. He went on to help Denali in managing the companies as well as making the plans for the future expansion. Considering that he had to monopolize at least five industries to make sure that he had completed the system's requirements for the upgrade, he had to lay a bigger foundation than the one that he currently had. As for Nathan, he didn't spare him. At that time, he had only paid him a visit to at least remind him that the house arrest was actually not the end of the punishment that he was going to receive. And true to what he had said back then, Jack had released a lot of information to the police. To make things easier for him to avoid the usage of the connections that the Jesta family had, he had decided that he was going to use the media once again. He had made sure that all types of media platforms had gotten the information about Nathan's actions that completely broke the loss. In this way, after the news was exposed, even if the Jesta family intended to keep Nathan in the family, they would have no choice but to concede to the public outrage. Of course, although he had revealed the information to the media outlets, he had instructed them that they would only release the news when he wanted them to do that. And if they dared not to do as he wanted them to do, he would be left with no choice but to hack their servers once again. Yes, he had decided that he was going to blackmail the guys so that they would do his bitings. With the fear that he had already installed in them the previous time that he had hacked their servers for two hours, these media outlets had no choice but to concede to him. At the end of the day, if they refused, 
they were the ones that were going to suffer the losses. Once Jack controlled the servers and prevented the running of the programs, then the losses that they were going to incur would be unimaginable. Additionally, added to the fact that what he wanted them to release to the public was actually some kind of information about a person that was supposed to face the law, they were going to comply to it anyways. They could take this as an opportunity that had been granted to them. They could twist the facts in such a way that it would no longer be that they were the ones that were being forced to reveal the information, but they were the ones that had gotten the information through their hard work. In this way, they would have soaring reputations that would wash away the humiliation that they had experienced previously when Jack had hacked into their servers. But of course, although they were complying with Jack's demands, that didn't mean that they were not trying to find out who he was. They would never like being controlled like that. Who could tell what Jack would ask of them in the future? What the guys didn't know was the fact that the information that they had gotten was on someone with a big background. Their plans to hog all the credits would surely cause them a lot of problems in the future. Jack had already foreseen that they might actually refuse to do as he wanted at the cost of some losses once they knew that Nathan was a part of the Jesta family. Although it was true that most of the public didn't know about Jesta family, that was only applied to those that were in the lower levels. As for those big bosses, they knew about them. They for sure knew about the fact that these big families could resort to drastic means such as killing if it involved their interests. With that to the side, Jack had continued dealing with a few other things. There was the one that involved the research center, the anti-leukemia pills. Through the influence that Jonathan had, he had managed to help Jack to have the clinical trials go through faster than they should have initially. And as such, by the end of this month, the first batch of the anti-leukemia pills were supposed to be entering the market soon. This was something that Jack was actually looking forward to. Although it was true that the system had already granted him the first income reward in the first month that he had acquired the research center, that didn't mean that he wasn't expecting something soon. Not only would the anti-leukemia pills be the first in the world that could actually grant a person immunity to leukemia, but they would also be sold by only his research center. For the sales that were to come, Jack had already made preparations for this by acquiring a few pharmaceutical companies. Although they were small, that didn't actually matter to him. In the end, all these companies were under the process of being merged into a single entity. With his capital, there would be nothing for him to worry about when it came to competition. Additionally, there was a fact that there were going to be a few more types of medicines that were bound to be found only by him through the system. As such, the pharmaceutical company that would be under him would be granted the monopoly power over those drugs. As for what he was currently doing to deal with Nathan, that was to completely ruin the reputation that Nathan had. And all that information that was present with the media was amongst the ones that he was planning to utilize. What he wanted was not only a painful death for Nathan, but also, even in death, Jack wanted Nathan's soul to be tormented. The torment would of course come from the public outrage that would ensue the moment that they were going to be informed about what Nathan had done. That guy, just to get to the position that he was in before Jack ruined it for him, he had committed a lot. There were many people that had suffered a lot, and they would be more than happy if they could see him getting what he deserved. Currently, a week had gone by since all those events had taken place during the week that Jack had paid a visit to the Jester residence. Jack was now seated in the living room of his villa, facing someone that, although he had expected that he would visit, he was still surprised by that visit. The person that was in front of him was someone that was supposedly related to him. He was his maternal grandfather, Benjamin. To say the truth, Jack had no sentimental value for the grandfather that was in front of him. Although he was his grandfather, the two of them were meeting for the first time. Jack was currently nearing 20 years old. And although the old man in front of him was actually the father to his mother, to say the least, Jack cared nonetheless about him. If truth was to be told, it could be said that he had a grudge with him. Although he was actually his mother's father, he had not done anything when his uncle Nathan was planning some sinister schemes that would have landed his mother into trouble. Although the marriage is that were involved were mainly political, there was completely no love in the marriage. And according to the information that Jack had collected, the person that was supposed to marry his mother at that time was actually a SC asterisk back. It is nice to see you, Jack. Benjamin stated with an amiable smile on his face as he looked at Jack. He had a hint of pride on his face as he looked at him. Well, I can't say the same. Jack was blunt with his words, not trying to sugarcoat them at all. Benjamin knew that this was going to happen when he came over to meet Jack. The two of them had never met before, and this was something that was bound to happen. They didn't have any kind of interactions in the past and as such, 
They were no different from strangers other than the blood bond that they shared. It seems that you are a straightforward person, Benjamin stated. Without waiting for just to say a word further, he asked, So, how have you been all this time? Fine, I guess, Jack replied sarcastically. He didn't want to believe that the old man before him didn't actually know the situation that he was in before he finally got the system. Since Nathan could actually locate him, there was no way that Benjamin could not locate and with all the resources that the family had. Jack had come to realize this after he had done his investigation on the family. He found that even the Alfonso family, his supposedly family, actually had people that were part of the Jesta family. Although they were of the lower status in the family, Jack would tell that in case they wanted to find someone, their low status didn't actually matter. Benjamin could easily pick out the sarcasm in Jack's words. He took a deep breath and spoke, I am sorry, but I was completely bound by the family rules. Although it pained me when everything that happened, happened, I had no choice. If possible, I really would have done something about it. But as a member of the family council, there was no way that I was going to interfere with something that was prohibited by the family rules. Jack looked at him and snorted. It seems that the family rules are more important to you guys than the lives of others. You actually knew about what was going to happen, but you never made a move to stop it. What is more, it is a fact that you actually knew what Nathan had done, but you never punished him. So, tell me, why are you being so insincere? Jack's anger began boiling again. He didn't like at the moment that Benjamin talked about the situation that his mother was in when the two of them were in the Alfonso family. His mother had been living in the Alfonso family for over two decades. And yet, during all that time, Benjamin didn't make any move to help her out. But now, here he was, claiming that he was feeling remorseful about what had occurred. Benjamin looked at Jack and stated after a while of silence, There are many things that you don't know. If she wanted to leave, there would have been nobody who would have been capable of stopping her from doing that. There are many things that you don't know. If she wanted to leave, there would have been nobody who would have been capable of stopping her from doing that. Jack frowned. He looked at Benjamin, not completely understanding what it was that he was trying to imply. Although he knew the fact that, and could have left the Alfonso family as long as she wanted back then, things were different when they involved Nathan. From the moment that Nathan had decided to make a move on her, it was obvious that it didn't matter whether she really left the Alfonso family or not. What are you trying to imply? Are you trying to say that Nathan would have decided not continue with his plans only because my mother left the Alfonso family? Jack questioned with a frown on his face. You really don't understand and just like before, I'm tied in that I cannot tell you about that. Benjamin sighed as he replied. A flicker of anger appeared in Jack's eyes, but he managed to hide it in that even Benjamin could not see it. So, why are you telling me things that you won't be explaining to me anyway? Are you trying to make me curious about things that you won't even bother to inform me about? Jack asked. Benjamin could sense the dissatisfaction in Jack's voice. He felt helpless at that moment. He really had come over so that he could form some bonds with this grandson of his. But at the end, things that he had always been regretting about were the same that were trying to create a gap between the two of them. Just from this, he couldn't help but curse at the fact that he was actually an elder in the family. To others who had yet to be in that position, they would think that the position was so prestigious in that. They wouldn't mind doing things that would create enemies for them just to acquire. But, Having been in that position for over three decades, he knew all too well that the position of the family elder was nothing that a person could be so proud about. Although he was proud that he was actually doing something for the whole jest of family, he was regretting the fact that he was so busy that he had to ignore his own family. Additionally, as an elder, there were several rules that he had to follow. In other words, as long as one became an elder in the family, then their freedom would be taken away. All their actions would have to consider the family rules first. And as such, this was no different from being denied the freedom of doing what they wanted. They were required to set an example for those that were below them. Jack, there are things that I cannot tell you even if I'm forced to. It's not that I don't want to, it's just that. Being a family elder, there are several things that I have to do, and there are others that I'm not allowed to do. Benjamin spoke in a low voice. Jack's eyes narrowed. So to you guys, the family rules are everything. You can even sacrifice others simply because the family rule states so. Those were the rules that were created by men, and they can be changed. Jack stated. Benjamin looked at Jack helplessly. In the end, he said, I've got no comment on that. But, I would like to let you know that. I myself am regretting the fact that I couldn't do anything for you when you were at the Alfonso family. But, as long as you give me a chance, I will make that up to you. I will try to do what I can so that I can cover the gap that had been hollow for years in your heart. 
Jack snorted when he heard that. He chuckled in the end and said, So, you are still an elder at this moment, and you can pay me a visit, and you can do a lot of things for me. But back then, you were still an elder but you could do absolutely nothing even when my mother was facing her demise. And she was actually killed by her own brother, your son. And that guy that was responsible, although you all knew about what he had done, you have never taken any action against him. He has been living happily when my mother is currently in her grave. Jack's voice got colder as he spoke of his mother's death. That was something that he would never come into agreement with. Had her death been a natural one, then he actually wouldn't have been the way that he was currently, full of resentment towards the ones that were involved. But she had died an unjust death. She was still young to say the least. Perhaps she would have been there to take care of some things like his marriage and so on. But now, the only other person that he was close to that represented his mother's figure, that would be Caitlin. At least, he had spent a lot of time with her during his childhood. Although Anita was his mother's twin sister and the relationship between the two of them was good, he and she were no different from strangers. Just like Benjamin who was in front of him, the two of them had never interacted before to the extent that they would get to know each other well enough. Although he had chatted with her during the previous week, that was not enough for him to actually know her character that well. The reason as to why I have decided to come over and ask you to give me a chance is simply because I'm about to abdicate my position as a family elder. With the new generation being almost ready to take over the position of the family head, I can with no doubt finally retire from the position. Benjamin stated as he looked at Jack. Jack frowned. Although this grandfather of his was actually an elder, from what he had learned about the family, only those that were related to the current family head were the ones who were supposed to take the positions of the elders. But with the past generation being banned from taking the position of leadership in the family, he was wondering who was going to take over the position of the family elders. I know what you're trying to think. But, I can inform you that, although the family rules state that the generation can no longer be the ones who are going to inherit the position of the family head, that doesn't apply on the position of the elders. Benjamin said. Jack finally got an understanding of what is going on. But all the same, he didn't care whether Benjamin really cared about him or not. At the end of the day, he had been living all this while alone with those that he considered close to him. Even without Benjamin, his life was not going to change. With the abilities that the system was granting to him, there was no way that he was going to fall behind, he believed. Upon seeing the uninterested expression on Jack's face, Benjamin could only shake his head as he sighed again. Can you be straightforward enough and tell me the reason as to why you really came over to see me? Jack questioned. Okay then, I'll be straightforward with you. What I came over for was to ask you to come back to the family. Although your mother left the family back then, you still have the blood of the justice running through your veins. And as such, you are qualified to be back into the family and you can even participate in the competition for the position of the family head if you like to. After a moment of silence, Benjamin replied. Jack looked at him. He then stated without a hint of hesitation on his face. I appreciate it. But you should know that I'm no longer part of the Jesta family. Even the Alfonso family where my so-called father is, I cannot consider it a family of mine. With the fact that my mother had left the family, as well as the sinister schemes that are always undergoing in that family, I don't want to be a part of it. Benjamin seemed to have expected something like that. He shook his head before he spoke again. Can you take your time to reconsider the offer? Even if you don't want to come back to the family now, you can still come back when you feel like it. I know that you have already investigated about my current situation. And I know all too well that you know the way that I am right now. I do believe that you know that with my current situation, I can really support myself. As for the family, I don't think I can consider it my family after all. It was the one who was involved with the death of my mother, as well as the fact that we have never interacted before. Jack wasn't going to code his words. He was someone who was going to be straightforward with whatever he had in mind. Since he didn't want to be a part of the Jesta family, then he might as well tell the family elder in front of him up front. Benjamin rose to his feet before he looked at Jack. The offer still stands. Whatever day you feel like you want to come back to the family, you are always welcome. After saying that, he turned around to leave the villa. I don't think I will ever consider that offer. And I'm sorry that I cannot send you out. Jack stated. 